Okay, so we can see in front of us now that uh, our safety officer has lit the fire. You can see the fire uh, grow quickly due to the additional fuel placed on top of the teepees. We can see the right hand side, we've got flame extension up to the ceiling now. Uh, we'll be starting to get lateral spread of that flame. Left hand side's taking a little longer to catch up. Okay, we, if we look up, it's a good opportunity. We can, we can start to see uh, what uh, embers being produced off the fire. Okay, a lot of that's gonna be the, um, the sawdust and diesel um, being lighter and being generated up into that overpressure region that is starting to form. It's a good opportunity for you to orientate yourself. Okay, so work your way to look at the back of the container. Now if you turn around to look at the back of the container, we can see the smoke building up and creating um, our overpressure region. And, and we can see it starting to slowly bank down. We can see the colour in the smoke at this point in time. Is it too dark? Okay, it will in, tend to increase. If we start to look to the sides of the container now, we're getting temperatures over 100 degrees and we're starting to get steam production within our overpressure region. As we continue on, we can start to see the lateral fire spread across our fuel load. As I mentioned to you before, take a good opportunity to have a look at this fuel load now in relation to the frame which it is in. All right, you can see now that we've moved back. This is generally the location which you'll be moving to. Uh, you need to control your fire to this point and this is about the point where you're looking at conducting suppression activities. As our fire is developed now, we can see our fuel load continuing to take hold. The fire take hold of our fuel load up high. We can start to see the introduction of our air track. If we look down low to the left hand side, we can see this, uh, the smoke slowly being drawn towards the fire. This starts to indicate to us that uh, we're creating an air track, but the slow moving uh, of the air track indicates to us that the fire is in its early development stage. As we see the fire continue to progress, we can start to see the neutral plane continuing to bank down and the thickness of the smoke build. All right, if we look to our right and slightly to the back, we can see the different, we can see the different layers within our um, overpressure region. If you look hard, if you look, you can see towards the bottom of our overpressure region, you can see a few different layers. That'll be the different types of fire gases that are coming off and their um, den density sitting at different levels at this point in time. If we start, to, if we look towards the back now, we can start to see we're actually, if you look at the floor at the back, you can start to see we get a little bit of steam production out of there and our air track is now starting to increase in speed due to the stage which our fire is at. Remember, due to we used a diesel and um, sawdust fuel bomb we went straight past the incipient stage into the growth stage. We are still in the growth stage at this point in time, but we've learned, moved from the early growth stage through to the middle to late growth stage now. You can see the intensity increasing in the, in the volume and velocity of smoke being given off by the fire. You can see the flame extension now as all the fuel become involved in fire and we're having flame extend down uh, a few metres in front of the fire at this point in time. If we look to the lower part of our fuel load now, we can see that we still have fire burning within uh, the two corners. So this is a good opportunity for you to understand where your fuel load for these compartment fires sits. You have fuel loading on the left and right hand sides from the base running up to the top and the fuel loading of the boards. Remember when I spoke to you earlier, it's important to understand where your fuel is as that is where you want to be um, applying your water during suppression. 
as the fire continues to intensify and we move towards um, full development stage, we've seen flame extension now through some of the smoke. If we look up in front of us, we can see flame extending into the smoke in the overpressure region and continuing to burn through. This is as we spoke to you, the pyrolysis gases that have been given off now after it reached 250 degrees uh, are in that overpressure region and within their flammability range and with an ignition source present they're able to burn. If we look to the side to the left and down low, we can see the speed of our air track being maintained. Remembering that our air track is a, com is a complete, it's the amount of air coming in within your under pressure region, as well as the amount of um, combustion products exiting um, the compartment. All right, we can see our fire, our fuel load on the top shelf is fully involved in fire and our fuel load on the second shelf down, we can see that the top of it is on fire but the underneath is still not caught to fire so we are not in full development stage at this point. We can see from where we first started that our neutral plane has now dropped down to the level. If we look to our right, we can see the doorway. The neutral plane has actually dropped down to where that doorway um, cuts in half, and that's indicated by the light on the outside. We can see it's continuing to come down. We can see the waves moving through the velocity of our overpressure region. We spoke to you about thermal balance. Thermal balance, as we spoke to you, was about an equal amount of incoming air to the amount of combustion products exiting the structure. You can see, as we spoke earlier, that the neutral plane will remain fairly stagnant at this point when it reaches thermal balance, and this is where we're at at this point in time. Some of the things that will impact on our thermal balance, as we spoke about earlier, if we were to place a pulse up into our overpressure region at this point in time, we can expect to see the neutral plane drop a small amount depending on the amount we apply to that um, amount of gas cooling we apply to the, into the gas layer. And as I spoke before, you'll have the neutral plane come down and then due to the steam expansion and then due to the contraction of the fire gases, the neutral plane should lift light slightly. All right, if we start to look now, we go back and we look to the right hand side and towards the back, we can start to, uh, we can continue to see the increasing speed of our air track feeding the fire. If we look up now above us, we can see flame propagating through our fire gases and over our head. This is a good opportunity for you to um, relate that back to the safe zoning at the 80 degree mark. So we spoke about gas cooling in a 30 to 45 degree spray pattern at an 80 degree angle to create the safe zone above you. This needs to be done when you have fire directly above you. Then proceeding, creating that safe zone and drawing your branch down to a 60 degree angle, we are then providing gas cooling to cool the gases prior to them becoming over our head and creating a safe space for us to move into. We can now see that the intensity of the fire and the amount of flame propagation has increased. And we have flame propagation almost all the way to the back of the container. Intensity of the fire, the volume and intensity coming off the fire has now increased. And as I spoke to you earlier, this will require you to be more dynamic with your branch application to control the environment because the environment is more uh, energetic. 
We're now reaching the point of, well, we're, we're still not at the point of full development. As you can see, we have boards down um, low in that under pressure region at the rear that haven't caught on fire. Remembering full development phase is the point where everything is involved in fire. You can see that the fire is now spreading rapidly. We have a uh, Yeah. Here. Okay, if we look up straight above us now, we, we just had a vent open. Okay, so that gives us the opportunity to understand what the vent is. It's an opening in the roof that we can open to allow fire and hot gases out of, as well as steam. That allows us to also get the fire brought on and bring some intensity into it. Thanks, Mr. Cook.